What about the move from a lot of schools to go into kind of online classes and these MOOCs and all these things? Or have you guys, you seem kind of like that wouldn't necessarily fit with what you're trying to do because it seems like you're very much hands-on and people going out into the world and doing things. But is that something you've thought about? Uh, so those are kind of two different things. One is online education and the other are the, the MOOCs, the massive online thing. We have never really gotten into massive online, and we still don't quite see that working, except for maybe some continuing ed programs, you know, things for alumni or people who are kind of mid-career who want to have a social media weekend or something like that. Um, online education is being integrated in a, a number of classes now. Several faculty are trying out every semester. And we see a couple of big advantages for us. One is we have a part-time program here where students do our usual one-year degree over two years. And generally speaking, these are students who have families, they have jobs, they don't have the flexibility in their schedule to take a whole year out of their lives. Very often, they may not live that close to campus either. So if we can come up with online ways of integrating them into certain classes um, or classrooms, then, then that can be incredibly helpful to them to kind of open that up. Um, but also, we're finding there's some classes that are actually better taught with at least some online component to it. Um, Nick Lemon, who's our dean, teaches a class called Art of the Interview, which is um, um, looking at how journalists interview subjects, but also comparing that to how um, a psychologist interviews a patient, to how a police officer interviews a suspect, to how a social worker interviews you know, a mom or a dad with a problem kid. And it's a really, really interesting class, but the part of the class is based on the students actually doing interviews in a studio of various actors that, that Nick brings in, and they do that both at the beginning and at the end of the semester, and they get to see how, their, how have their interviewing skills changed over that time. Well, you can see, if you do that online, and you post these videos online, students can kind of watch them and compare and, and critique each other. That's a lot better than just showing them up on some screen on a balmy Thursday afternoon where, you know, you may or may not be caffeinated enough to stay away th through all the class. And so, um, so I think what we're looking for are what are the really intelligent ways that online can really enhance or accelerate learning in the classroom. Will it work? Let's say someone's coming and they do want to go into broadcast. Will they, they'll take the kind of basic core classes, but they will still be able to take kind of the specialty classes. So they can pick and choose, basically. Take a broadcast, take what would be a print or a reporting, take a video one, and kind of mix and match. Well, here's, so here's um, kind of how it'll work. Uh, our students arrive very early, actually, the 1st of August. And the first three or four weeks, they're getting kind of very basic digital training in photo and audio. And they're also starting to meet with the, the students who will be in their reporting class. And they'll meet with those um, with their professor or, or their adjunct four or five times during August. And then come September, pretty much all their time, the next seven weeks, will be spent in the reporting class. And the idea to this class is to um, help them understand the core values and practices of being a reporter. What does it mean to be a reporter? What is a story? How do you conceptualize a story? How do you gather information for it? How do you present it in a coherent and cogent way? Students will still be out there writing stories. They'll, they'll be out there covering beats, um, uh, which is very much part of the Columbia culture, that you don't spend that much time in the building. You should be spending a, a lot of time <clears throat> in Brooklyn or the Bronx or maybe in Afghanistan if, if, if that's where the story takes you. Um, <clears throat> so they'll get a very intensive um, uh, learning experience in a relatively small class around 15 students for those seven weeks. They'll then get a week off to work on to start working on their master's project, which is their year-long um, uh, big enterprise journalism. And then in, in the second half, they'll do everybody will take a writing class of some kind. It could be profile writing, deadline writing. They'll be able to choose which we thought was important. And we do think writing is still the kind of you know, one of the core things of expressing yourself as a journalist, whether you're a broadcaster, digital, or print, or, or magazine, or some medium that we haven't invented yet, being able to, to write clearly is just a fundamental skill of what it means to be a journalist. 
And then um, students also in the second half will be able to take a class in what we call image and sound. It could be data visualization, it could be video, audio, or uh, the photojournalism. Um, that, that will cover most of them. And then in the spring, they'll go on and do more specialized classes in either subject areas like um, business or science journalism or uh, the workshop areas like you know, long-form magazine writing or book writing or something along those lines. The, the other big change that we're adding, and um, some students will do this in the first semester, many of them will do it in the second, is a mandatory class where we're calling audience and engagement. Um, and this is a class to help them understand something more about how, how much different a journalist relationship is with his or her audience in a, a digital age. And it's different both in terms of, you know, what comes in, how do you, you know, how do you find sources online, how do you deploy your readers to learn more about topic, and obviously on the other end, how do you distribute it? You know, how do you use your audience to help get your journalism out to the maximum number of people? Um, so I'll be teaching that with Emily Bell and Sri Srinivasan. So um, I'm, I'm a little intimidating teaching a class like that with the two of them. But, uh, you know, Sri obviously knows as much about social media as almost anybody. And Emily, as I often say, was the editor of a website that had 30 million users, even though the underlying newspaper had 350,000 subscribers.